Hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Open Democracy's live discussion on why do Russians support the war. My name is Polina Aronson, and I'm an editor at the Russian language section of Open Democracy, and I'm very happy to welcome all of you today, together with our wonderful panelists, Yelena Konyova and Oleg Zhuravlev, who will introduce in more detail just a little bit later. Um, let's have just a few seconds uh, to get you settled here, and uh, in the meantime, while you are coming in, please um, feel free to write where, why you're joining us and where you're joining us from. Uh, let's just wait for maybe another 30, 60 seconds. So hi again, uh, for everyone who has just joined us, this is Open Democracy's live event on why do Russians support the war. I am Polina Aronson, I am the editor at Russian language version of Open Democracy, and I am very happy to see all of you here today with us. Um, so the title of today's discussion may sound quite provocative to you. Because since Russia's full-scale scale invasion of, into Ukraine, many European politicians and public figures insisted that this is Putin's war and not Russian's war. And this popular trope suggests that regular citizens do not support Kremlin's politics and that the virtual absence of open protest may be explained only by people's fear of prosecution and imprisonment. And yet there might be some wishful thinking involved in this reasoning. As Jade McGlynn, an expert on Russian politics, suggests in her latest book, Russia's War, the war with Ukraine could not be fought without support of the Russian people. How far the support goes? What does support actually mean? And what role does propaganda play in feeding it? Since the beginning of the war, Open Democracy has tried answering these questions in our publications. We have spoken to media experts and sociologists. We have reported from Russia's poor regions and from capital cities. We have turned from for expertise to the few remaining independent local deputies to find answers. And unfortunately, what we found wasn't exactly great news. Indeed, very few people would agree that they actually outwardly support murders of civilians and destruction of whole cities. Most, however, would find explanations for why in this particular situation, the so-called special military operation was, in their opinion, the lesser of all evils. And today we will try to find explanations to the seeming paradox together with our experts, Helena Koneva, founder and researcher at international research and analytical company Extreme Scan. Helena, I'm very pleased to see you here. Hello. And Alek Zhuravlev, researcher with Public Sociology Lab, an independent hub conducting qualitative social research. Hello, Alek. Good to see you here. Hi. Hi. Um, unfortunately, one of our speakers, Jade uh, Maglin, who I have just cited in the introduction uh, to this event, is unable to join us today because she is actually traveling from Kiev into Europe and it has become logistically impossible for her to be with us today. But um, I will still actually come back to some of the ideas that she uh, writes about in her book because it's extremely pertinent to what we're going to be talking about. Um, before we start, uh, I'm inviting everybody in this audience to write your questions into the chat and uh, I will be monitoring it and uh, we will try to answer at least uh, a few of your questions today. So, Alek, Helena, my first question to you. Um, what was the moment when you realized that support for the war is in fact quite widespread, if not massive, and definitely larger than you might have expected? And how did it make you feel? Yelena, can we start with you? You're muted, I'm afraid. You have to turn on your mic. I learned quite fast since a week the war started when we finish our first uh, urgent uh, opinion call, and uh, we find out that support is, is, is really high. It was 58%. And the beginning of the war was insane, and it's clear, but, but uh, the level of support was really uh, impossible. You see, we, we, I, would never, I would never believe that we could get this figures. 
I can understand why uh, why uh, people could support uh, Putin or governor or or accept without protest um, in injustice or uh, cruelty or, or lies in the country. But it, it's very hard to. Um, to understand how people can s support the war, which is the worst what could happen in people's life. And, and for me, it was a very uh, painful and, uh, and, uh, and motivating question. So since the, I decided by, by that few uh, first days that, that uh, it would be my personal goal to understand the reasons for that support, the, the nature for this support, and to find a narrative to do all the best to decrease it. So, of course, there was a shocking feeling, but on the other side, I would say it was inspiring for me. Because I, I guess that it would be my, my business for the rest of my life. Yeah. Alina? No, no, no sound. Sorry, no, it's my fault. Yeah. Alina, please, uh, you definitely also have something to, to add to that. And uh, I just uh, want to um, um, explain very briefly that uh, whereas Yelena's company is conducting um, uh, actually opinion service and telephone, uh, telephone service and doing uh, polls on uh, large samples of population, Alega and his team are working uh, with qualitative methods, working with um, smaller samples uh, by in-depth uh, interview methods. So uh, the impressions from the field also vary because of the um, method differences. Please, Alia, go ahead. Yeah, so um, the first uh, opinion poll numbers uh, appeared very soon after the war started. So, and we uh, saw like the, the huge number of for those uh, presumably supporting the war. So, and we didn't trust uh, because uh, <clears throat> we know uh, we used to study depoliticization and political indifference in Russia for many years. We know that Russia is not that much politicized society. So, that is why, of course, we thought that some numbers could be falsified, uh, but we decided that we have to take in-depth interview to understand what does it mean for a person to support the special military operation. So uh, when we uh, got first interviews, when we took for first interviews, so we realized that yes, uh, that for, for many people, uh, support is not active. Support is maybe not, we can call support in a strict sense of the world. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and our sample is really, is, is, is in, indeed small, but not, uh, so we, we collected already like more than 300 interviews. So we can also <laughs> a bit judge about widespreadness of, 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 of different types of, of support. Yeah, so, and, and then we understood like, that we need, we need to continue our research and to, then we took another wave of interviews to understand how, how this support uh, changes over the time. I understand why he, did, he <clears throat> Oleg didn't believe because the, the known and most popular, most published and it's, it's worldwide known figures were coming from the state uh, uh, research institute. And the, the, our, our figure, I guess that that's during the first months maybe Alec did not detect it, other sources of independent research. Uh, and uh, yes, so compared with, uh, with all, we, during all the war, we have a difference. And it's not difference, it's not falsifying, uh, uh, like, like manipulating in the computer figures. It is just the way how they ask. And it's, it's, you, 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 you may not uh, deviate your figures, you, you, you just need to uh, rightly ask in, in the right form. And that's why we always have a huge difference. And unfortunately, the whole world think, and it's always used and sometimes exaggerated, the figure 80% of Russians support the war. Uh, but it never been the truth, the, that figure, even though even our figure up to 60%, it, it's consistent, later we will discuss it, it consists of very different groups inside of support. 
but uh, but I'm struggling even for for that how to say very direct very surface uh, measurement like like just question do you support or not so but now I hope that now uh, Oleg trust to quantitative research a bit more yes yes it's it's true that uh, state run opinion polls have basically discredited um, <clears throat> quantitative research methods and um, Actually, uh, now at this point, I think it's fair to ask you a question that uh, several people have already thrown in uh, into the chat also before the event and now. Is it even possible to conduct sociological research in an authoritarian regime where people might be afraid to express their opinion? And uh, how are you able to verify that the data that you get is actually, you know, the people tell you what they think and um, mm, that the figures that you are getting, uh, Yelena, from your polls, and that the narratives that you are gathering from your interviews, Oleg, that they actually are representative of uh, bigger clusters of society. So I'm uh, I'm absolutely confident that what we what we reporting is very close to the reality. What we're achieving in terms of figures, it's never the reality because it's not possible just to reproduce the consciousness, which when people uh, don't know themselves, what do they mean when they answer? In a full sense, you see, we, we always working, uh, working with words and only in-depth interviews, only qualitative research allow us to go in depth and to understand what is behind just answers to our questionnaires, to our simple questions. And, uh, but uh, the overall conclusions of all sociologists which are related to any research now in Russia, that the level of so-called response rate, and it means that uh, the difference between initial contact and final final um, collected interviews is is not much worse than compared to before time before war times, and it means that it is uh, uh, absolutely acceptable uh, for um, to uh, to uh, realize what is going on, what's happening, and we have very many. Uh, uh, um, say tricks and some approaches to how, how we can compensate. Very good example. We measured first time be before the law about the fake uh, uh, punishment against the, the army and the war in Ukraine, which happened in, on the 4th or 5th of March. And uh, we, we uh, anticipate uh, complexity or, uh, in getting uh, trustful answers. And we just, it, it's very simple exercise. We, we add to the normal formulation, do support the war, sorry, the military, special military operations. That's how it sounds in, in our Russian service. Or do not support. And we add, or oh, it's hard to answer, or you don't want to answer this question. And uh, so spontaneously, uh, people can say themselves, but sometimes they are not enough confident that they can say so. But when we offer them that option, we immediately see the, res so the results. Uh, that is the main uh, uh, reason why our results, are our, our, our uh, ratings of, uh, of supporting the war is so much different from uh, all three posters. Uh, there are two uh, state institutions, and there is one Levada Center um, who is in independent, and uh, we cannot uh, suspect that they are doing any manipulation. Uh, but still, they have very similar figures with those, those two. Uh, just because they don't do that, that it's it's very important to give uh, to give opportunity, how to say, to hide, <laughs> to hide the opinion on the sensitive on the set of, on the sensitive questions. And uh, one of the respondents even said that thank you very much for the opportunity not to, to discover my views. Uh, that because some, some people, should, by the way, people are sometimes uh, afraid to answer the questions, but sometimes they are uh, they uh, they shy not to, not to answer. And when we give them opportunity, it helped a lot. And uh, um, you, you see how how we construct our sample design, how we how we do it. It's, it's very. Uh, hard and very professional work. Uh, we co we cooperate with uh, many call centers. It is like net on on Russia. There are now since the war started, there are a few very well working centers which are which is just private apartments where people are sitting and working. In in you know because it's easy to come to the 
um, to the call center and just to shut down. <laughs> and that's why we have some uh, a spare opportunity how, how we can continue. And it's great. If we're talking about the braveness, the, the, the most brave uh, in, in that story of our, our research are the uh, operators and, and people who are working for, for those call, cent call centers. And uh, but that is that is a normal. So sample sample design that is a normal before war, after war, during the war. But uh, what is uh, crucial? Ah, very important, of course, formulation of the question. So they are really human, and not to to do it too formal. Because in, interesting, we discovered that as when we ask people very official language question, uh, the respondents could react not by consciousness, but but. But I don't know by by the spinal, <laughs> and uh, and the the uh, that is why it's important to to talk in a human way in a, try try to establish the conflict. We specially instruct now uh, our uh, operators that the, their work is uh, double more important, many times more important because now our information is is telling about the very uh, essential issue for for the whole world. And uh, on the other side, we explained that, that it is for very many respondents, it could be the only opportunity to discuss, <coughs> talk. And when I'm listening to the real interviews, I, I hear that people do not want even to stop just un, un, after answering our questions. They want to continue this topic. And it's a pity that the operator has instructions just to go on, to continue. And most important, uh, how to say, Preservation of uh, our uh, of uh, illusion and and getting getting wrong conclusion and we need predictive data we need uh, to to see if if we, if today we we say that people are not ready for protests we 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 are responsible for this word or just vice versa that that we feel that people are tired of the war and tomorrow you will see uh, thousands of people coming on the streets and. Uh, uh, very important analysis because one way I think now maybe we uh, smoothly move to our next next topic because it's it's very good uh, good um, good join and uh, uh, the the analysis means that, that we yes we ask a question support or not the war but we can see there's a how to say how we call it a technical question. It's 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 like our initial point and uh, can you imagine that when we ask uh, uh, the person do support? Yes, I do support. What are you ready to do for 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 the war? Do you re ready for charity for the army or go to participate um, in in military actions in in uh, uh, in Ukraine? No, no. And uh, do expect any good for you, any benefit for you uh, out of uh, the potential victory of Russia? No. And okay, so what does it mean your support? That is why we, when we model the the group of the real supporters, we uh, we try uh, to find out that they they uh, it's some that substantial support that they they are ready to do something. Oh, and in every of our we did now many ways, dozen of ways during the war, and we ask very many different questions, and in every way we have. Uh, alternative questions which we use for that modeling of the group or segment how we say and uh, for example yes i support i support the war but i want the war is is finished as soon as possible or i support the war but but i think that it's better to spend the state budget on the social social issues and uh and uh, so we we really try to, to to take few criteria and combine this group of real support and that prevent us from the wrong uh, wrong conclusions or analyzing some false data thank you elena this is uh, super interesting and indeed i think uh, the question that actually really interests uh, most people in this audience is what do we actually mean by support? How does support manifest itself? What do you define by support? Are there any clear practices of support? Is it just 
verbal support, just silent acquiescence? Is it more than that? And um, I would like to ask Oleg about that a little bit more because you work with in-depth interviews. People actually tell you a long story, you know, and um, maybe you have um, something to say about that. You know, how do people themselves define support? Yeah, um, so the very important conclusion from our research is that uh, active, like we know this also from the uh, post numbers, like that active supporters are like minority, like maybe 10%. Uh, very active opponents of the war also represent, also constitute my minority. So the the majority of the society is some, some somewhere in between. So and here we can see uh, some some uh, important things. For for first of all, uh, we see that uh, there is a kind of passive support uh, which uh, is not based on like political representation. Where uh, when people say mm -hmm, we support those in power because they represent us, they are similar to us, we share a common values or common interests. So that is why we. Because we are accustomed to think, uh, uh, and we learned this from, from the Western research, like that support is based on political representation. But uh, here we, uh, in Russia, we see the quite the opposite uh, picture. Like people, many people uh, reflect on their own meaning of support and say something like, okay, to be honest, we uh, not only uh, like, hate any wars, uh, including this one, but we also don't like very much those in power and we don't understand them. And that is why we hope that they have a reason, they, they had a reason to start the war because like it, it, it is impossible to start such thing without a reason. So, but, and then they reflect on like their incompetence, like, uh, you know, uh, what I understand very well that I cannot understand politics well. So, what I know uh, for sure definitely is that I don't, I don't know that much about politics. I am, I am too incompetent. Uh, that is why I hope that those in power who know more had the reason to start the war. Another thing is that uh, people, many people being apolitical, being depoliticized, as I just said, at the same time, they are like very morally sensitive. So they are moral subject. And that is why they cannot uh, actively, enthusiastically support the war because it is immoral. At the same time, they cannot uh, become strong opponents of the war because it is too politicized for them. So to, 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 to um, uh, express, to, to, to build uh, this, uh, anti-war position like is too political, too politicized for them. That is why they uh, often uh, develop an argument that the war, this war was inevitable. So they think of it as if it uh, was like natural disaster. So sometimes, and some of them repeat Putin's arguments about like, if we would not attack Ukraine, Ukraine or, or, or NATO would attack Russia in the future, that is why. But anyway, like what they, what they um, uh, are doing is very actively finding some arguments and justification in favor of this inevitable nature. Of, or they can, can say like, war, we thought before that war is like something uh, unthinkable, but now we, we know that wars happen some, from time to time in different countries, so it's like natural uh, logic of history. People, find, is, people, people, find, people, people are now finding uh, justifications for the evil that they're witnessing. And um, I wonder, and there is a question about that in our chat as well, how have this reasoning, these narratives of explanation changed from the beginning of the war and um, whether the support rates actually have fluctuated in any, um, you know, in any interesting, any um, 
you know, any meaningful way. Um, basically, have the attitudes changed? I think, Helena, I actually want to ask uh, the, my first, the, the, the um, my first question goes to you about whether you see it in the data, um, uh, whether the support levels have ch changed in any way. And then, Alega, I wanted to say a few things about how these narratives actually, have they mutated, have they changed? <clears throat> Helena, please. Uh, yes, with pleasure. I, I want to answer this question because I think that it's one of the principles for understanding uh, the war, di war perception dynamic. Uh, we... <clears throat> Uh, one, uh, it was one one year uh, special marking events, and so everybody wants to analyze the whole uh, year of the war. Uh, we tried to um, to build up uh, stages. We tried to build up stages of the war, and I'm very happy that uh, quite many people uh, said that it, it it looks like like the the, the real and, and the true. And uh, they, they will not know we consider that it is fifth stage. During the stage, the, yes, the, the, the say war rating, let's call it in that way, was was changing. Not much, but but uh, there was first uh, first uh, long uh, three three phases um, part, which finished by by mid of mid of summer, somewhere in July. What was happening? See, it, it's. Uh, in the beginning, they were, of course, uh, we shouldn't forget that what, whatever we discuss, we have to remember that we have, and it's my principal statement, that we have not one Russia, but we have two Russias. And, and, or, and I, more, less and less I dislike the discussion about uh, overall figures or overall support, because it, in, in that case, we are, we are losing, <coughs> we are dismissing very, very important uh, part of the society. So we have, say, 50% uh, nuclear support is, is uh, less than 40% uh, uh, of half of the population. But we have some people which are, are not sure, they are, uh, are undetermined their, uh, their position. But we have, according to our, uh, to our calculations, we have 30% of people who are opponents to the war. Ten of them, they are openly answering our question, which I mentioned. I do not support, but there are other twenty percent which which do not uh, answer this question, but they are answering other questions exactly according to the profile of opponents. So we think that they are hidden part of 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 um, uh, refusal of the war. And uh, so in the first stage, it was a part of the first, of course, few. Uh, um, uh, the fear on one side and confusion on the other side, excitement, and it was it, it really exaggerated by, by propaganda. You see, media were very intensive, especially during this time. Putin was every other week, you see, on the screen. Uh, and it was, according to the questions, how long the, the war would be prolonged, uh, people, most of the people, most of this part, they were saying that few months. What does it mean, few months? Few months means four or five months, up to six, because four, six is already half of here. When it was over this period, and war was not completed, and we were not in Kiev, we did not celebrate the uh, Victory Day parade in Kiev, nothing that happened. And on the other side, uh, people had been, some people lost the war, lost the work, the, the, the material status, and uh, other many bad consequences. It, it was it was um, the period of uh, the first wave of migration, people uh, start to realize it is not the special short-term uh, victorial uh, special military operation. And that was a uh, systematic lowering, which is, which, is, which is continued until now. There were two interesting uh, uh, peaks, low peaks. That was the first mobilization, and now just finish our measurement about the second uh, <clears throat> changes in uh, uh, amendments to the law about the uh, military service, which made people realize that, that before they tried to find out uh, the way how, how to uh, avoid uh, getting, getting that um, notice about the military service. Uh, uh, but now they understand that it's more, it's more complicated. So mobilization, 
meet people more concerned. But in my mind, two small changes, you see, because I, I would say when, when now the war materialized, when it is, it is all just, uh, you see, on, on, uh, behind the door of your, of your home, it's, it's really, uh, the, the drop is not that tremendous. So from 55 to 51% of support of the war, it, it's not enough. We'll see, maybe it will develop and when the reality will come more and uh, it, it, it will change. And uh, so that, 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 that is, that is, that is uh, stages uh, during, during, during this war. Maybe I'm, 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 I, I haven't answered fully. In okay. the, just just uh, if you can summarize it maybe in in in, in yeah. just in one or two sentences i think this is what actually a lot of people are interested in knowing you know because russians are observing uh not only military crimes that russian army is uh, um committing in the territory of ukraine it doesn't they don't only observe all these horrors that are happening over there and because they can all call them, you know, this is a fake, this is all staged, like these photographs have been taken in the studio, we don't believe all that. All right, but people are actually observing the absolute failure of Russian commandments to actually provide for their own soldiers. They are observing severe losses. They are observing, you know, absolutely inhuman treatment of uh, Russian troops by the Russian government. And yet uh, the support remains rather stable. How is that possible? So, if you maybe can summarize. Uh, um... I, it's, yes, I, I will. I will. I will answer. I have. I have my answer to the question. Uh, uh, it is not just one direction uh, process, and we always will. Would, uh, so, what we will, will have in figures in in uh, uh, real people behavior, it will be summarizing of sometimes opposite op opposite division. Like uh, we uh, first. Uh, uh, our, I, I would say that, that I am very impressed by, by, by Russian propaganda. I think that it's, it's very highly professional, intensive work. And uh, if you, just to be abstract from the content, because sometimes it's, it's, it's hard even to listen more than five minutes, but, but they're doing a, a, a very um, effective job. They, they, uh, uh, every, 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 uh, every war event, they, uh, uh, now very artful uh, describe in 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 their own explanations uh, rationalization like we we save our people because that's why we we make step back in here so on and uh, whatever happened of course when it is collected one failure other failure of course people still will will start to ask so what what's going on and 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 uh, military military success is a key now for every every measurement in, in attitudes to, towards Russia. And uh, <clears throat> during many years before, since 2008 or 2014, there were different steps arising that propaganda against the West, NATO against Ukraine, and, and, uh, and um, increasing tolerance to war like, as a measure to decide to resolve national interest. And uh, people consciousness came uh, uh, to the so arrived to the war, being completely ready to consume, to swallow everything what uh, uh, the power, what the propaganda wants to deliver, and uh, uh, they created tonal thinking and whatever information you see. I we were thinking what could influence the the war perception, and we were thinking that. Uh, it could be okay as soon as people will see the truth when when they start to use VPN, when they when more uh, more uh, people, more men on the war, more more killed, uh, any any objective facts, it, it does not work because they uh, they um, re re rationalize it in a way which did not disturb their world picture, their, their, their picture which was created for, for a long time. And, uh, and just vice versa, it could be the even, um, the, the more losses we will have uh, during, during the next month or so, it could be two, two uh, opposite process. One process that people would feel uh, really uh, um, damages and losses, and they understand that, that the war is bringing only evil, nothing, nothing, nothing good, nothing benefit, and uh, they will consider how how long we have to keep it. 
Yeah, uh, on the other side, oh, I, I anticipate the, the second, uh, the second um, of, say, wave of, of consolidation. And that would be the consolidations after, uh, uh, not under the flag, not under the leadership of Putin, how it was said many times. Yes, it is not, you see, that we, uh, the propagandists, they explain that it's not, it's not something surprising, this high figures of the support, because it's just consolidation. This was true. Putin was the flag of, of, of the war. And it's very easy to delegate him on one side, on the other side, to be proud that we have such a strong leader. Uh, but now uh, I, I, uh, I uh, um, anticipate that we will have uh, co consolidation under Schelling. And uh, well, well, because it's, 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 a, it's a normal, uh, well, it's, uh, it's special research in, in border regions shows that where we have Belgorod, Kursk and, and Bransk, uh, they demonstrate higher figures of support. And those who affected, but because it's not the whole region, only the the strip along you know, some region along the border, and those who along the border and already felt all these destructions and in civilian uh, injury or deaths, you see, they they are more supportive to war. They are less supportive to stop the war. Well, that's and probably because they exposed yeah. to, to what is happening, and they feel even more reconfirmed in their feeling that the country um, needs to be uh, needs to be protected. Um, this is, uh, and maybe this could be the explanation, but I would like to ask uh, Oleg, actually, there is a question in the chat that I think um, goes up very much your alley. Uh, when I spoke about people actually, you know, encountering facts about um, um, consequences of the war for their own relatives, for those who are in the army, for those who are maybe, um, you know, losing jobs, for, um, you know, Russians who actually face uh, the consequences of the war inside of the country. Um, there is a question in the chat, somebody, um, um, Barbara Clark is asking, do people actually really observe those effects? Do they have a chance to see the reality? And uh, Alia, I want to ask you about that because you, you're you not just a sociologist, uh, you also are an editor of a very popular Telegram uh, channel called Nivaina, uh, No to War, I suppose, uh, which actually uh, discusses uh, or presents uh, real examples of um, reactions of ordinary Russian citizens who may be in some form pro-war, who encounter those kind of uh, uh, atrocities, violations, and how their views uh, are affected by, by these experiences. And uh, your channel is so popular uh, that it was recently infiltrated by, uh, probably by FSB, we don't know that for sure, maybe you know that for sure, but uh, it was uh, broken into and you had to restart it again because I supposedly, particularly this kind of information, um, the state considers to be very dangerous, you know, when actually real people uh, encounter real shit and then maybe they actually start thinking for real about how it concerns them. So do you see any changes in people's narratives when they encounter those things? Or as Yelena says, they just live in a tunnel and uh, there is little chance for anything to change the trajectory along which they move. So first of all, concerning support, we can see that, <clears throat> so uh, we interviewed many people twice. So the first time in spring and in autumn, and we saw that people do, don't change their position dramatically. So uh, there are no protesters who became opponents of the war. There, there are no opponents who became uh, supporters of the war. However, within the same position, people can change like their attitudes, like to be more radical or more moderate. Uh, to and and. Of course, these changes are caused by some difficulties they face. And, um, but what our research shows, so, so that you never know how exactly difficulties they face will change their mind. Because for example, if you lose your job, uh, you can, uh, you can say, okay, it is because of the war, so now I go protest against it. But at the same time, they can feel depressed and feel 
need for more solidarity in society, especially after many people left Russia, uh, many opponents of the world left Russia. And so many people like continue supporting the war because they feel that this social solidarity, which is needed when you have problems, is in question. So that is why just to keep integrated into the Russian society, which is very atomized. So still you cherish these small social relations you have. And so conformity, conformism can be caused by this um, desire to preserve solidarity. The same is like when you, even, I mean, uh, if you lose, I don't know, a child or a husband, so you can say that so it, it, it can make you more angry towards those in, in power, especially because we know that mobilization uh, happened with many troubles. So it, 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 it violated law many times, so people uh, randomly were uh, drafted uh, and sent to the front line. So uh, people were really angry uh, about this. But at the same time, so what conclusions they, they can make? So that, okay, if we pay this price, so we need victory. To make this price like uh, uh, justified. Otherwise, how we can live our lives uh, uh, in the future. So uh, you, you never know how exactly these troubles will impact people's minds. So this, this is what, 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 what we uh, understood during our research. It's, it's, it's supported by quantitative research. You see, any, any, any respondents which uh, family members are at, uh, at war or have been participating in, in the war, um, they, they have a shift to, in supporting the war. And we ask, who, we ask, we ask uh, try to analyze those who has what, what, what <clears throat> decreases the support of the war if, if you have uh, sons. But what is interesting is sons, young son, be, before age, 18 years old. If you have older, it doesn't work. It, even, even if it does not concern, I cannot say that it's divided by, <clears throat> by gender. Uh, even even women, they, they, they support the war, which is which is really very very strange. Overall, women support the war less for sure. Mm -hmm. But comparing mothers and fathers, uh, uh, so we, we see that it's it's really it's really it doesn't work. It doesn't work in, in in decreasing the support. No no worries. Uh, and that's, 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 that's unfortunately uh, the reality because some, some yes, and, and uh, we have the question how people um, uh, perceive those who try to avoid the army and uh, more people uh, uh, feel sympathy to them, but very high figure, like 40% who really uh, criticize them and think that they, 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 they place it, it. It's a civil duty to be in the army now. Well, it's a civil duty and a gender role. You know, there, there yeah. are a lot of questions. Gender role, yes. It's demonstration that, that you are real men. But uh, I want to go back uh, to something that Alex said just a few minutes ago, that uh, once people uh, lose somebody in war directly, when they actually suffer those losses, they have the direct experience, um, they are actually, you know, they may radicalize and, uh, you know, actually really pine for victory. But I wonder what do people imagine as victory? Uh, who is Russian, Russia fighting against and with, with which purpose? What is, the, what is the victory of this war? Do people have actually an image of what victory would be like and what's gonna come afterwards? Uh, uh, first of all, I want to say that, that, that we, we hardly, uh, I, I, I hope I like uh, uh, neither, uh, communication with the people who lost uh, <clears throat> their sons or husbands so they, it, they were out of scope of our, our research uh, 
but we can we can see <clears throat> so the the other categories as I said that who participate it's it's much more twenty percent of uh, uh, people declare that somebody from their family um, uh, participated or participate now. Uh, and uh, as I said, they, they are more, how to say, more oriented like uh, on the war uh, and thinking that and saying that uh, if 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 my son, my relative, it is the war, why why one not others? That's why they are even stricter in, in those who try to to avoid. It's very interesting. It's exciting. Very interesting question about the image of victory. It's it is very important because this is a sort of key to understand why uh, why people are ready to continue the war. Why 40, 45 percent say I even do not support uh, uh, Putin's decision if he would decide to withdraw a uh, army from from Ukraine, start start peaceful talks. Uh, because it, it, I think that one of the reasons, there are a few reasons why it's happening. Because there is a hoax, like very, very military guys, but they are very small. It's 15% maximum. Uh, but the rest, the, the reason is that we, we run the war and we don't know how to stop it. We don't have, I, I believe that it's, uh, there is no, that concept, uh, not only uh, among the normal populations, but in elite, and uh, nobody knows. Nobody can give construction, and and it is so uh, so obvious. Let be, uh, we don't see any any we don't see any um, how to say motivating stories. What is what 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 the word does mean? And sometimes you see when we meet uh, people saying that. Uh, so, don't forget that 30%, around 30% of Russians in, in reality, in our research, these are the people that we, which are so suffering over the life that for them is the war some, somewhere on the top of Maslow pyramid. The, 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 <coughs> the, it's, 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 not, it's out of their everyday thinking. And uh, and they know and they they by the way they're less they they're less uh, um, supportive of war and uh, when we're coming and asking those questions for them it's you see automatically yes they support but the rest is means that, that you do not support and we ask once because the respondent okay so you you want you believe that that Russia must win and so why what uh, the victory will bring for you what uh, beneficial why you and and he said that because nothing nothing to rely on I, I, I nothing to expect you see these are people which are waiting for a miracle and now the victory in that war looks like like a lack of the miracle and uh and I, it's it's very uh, imp, uh, for me it's very essential uh, finding and I, I want to, to just, just even to be faster to, to read uh, the uh, the image of of the future of, of the victory what is what, what what is what is a victory in the what should bring it what do we want it's a peace end of the special military operation peace of mind peoples and mind uh, moral satisfaction, uh, trips to Ukraine to 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 visit relatives and to to visit our friends in Ukraine, safety, security, uh, economic economic business will get better, restrictions will be will, will be lifted. Uh, I'm I'm reading by the way this is the list, and I'm reading according to the percentage from the top to bottom, and you see this is the most popular answers. Uh, uh, people will uh, will stop dying. Children will stop suffering. Good for the whole country. It will get better. Uh, uh, personal material and financial gain. I, I I will be back to my to my job. Joy, happiness, all what I described now. It is just a it's a simple formula. We won't come back. We won't come back. This is so, and that that is that is an open end questions. We don't say, uh, do you think, uh, do what, do you think that possible Russian victory in military operation in Ukraine would or would not benefit you personally? If so, please say what kind of benefit will we, will it bring to you? That was the question, and people just deliver the story, and just few, which is just few, uh, just two or three. The last one, it's uh, 
Oh, confidence, stability and confidence is the same, the same category. Uh, confidence in tomorrow. Uh, in, uh, in the two, uh, there will not be fascist Nazis uh, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, Russia will strengthen its position in the world. Russia will be respected. So this this this, this two against dozen of, of those who just simply describe that people uh, really want to come back. So people are describing everything in a the, the concept of victory is very fuzzy, and uh, victory would just mean going back to two thousand. 14 or actually maybe to 1990. I think it's 14 partly because it's a tricky, it's a tricky element in all this. No, I said just to come back to the beginning of, 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 of this year. They do not, they, 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 the people do, of course, do not identify. Uh, so they, they have been happy and so satisfied. It's not an important issue, I'm sure, Crimea. Uh, so it's done. Let, let's keep it apart. Uh, uh, but uh, so the rest, we just they do not identify the war, uh, sort of uh, not that full scale war, but there was a war in Donbass. Just want they, don't to care. Over. they don't care. Uh, first, first wave of uh, of the war, uh, uh, Paul. We ask what are the goals. There was a rich list of goals of the military mm -hmm. operation, and the the the, the champion was a. a Protect uh, the Russian uh, Russian population, Russian Russian speaking people in Donbas, because mm -hmm. it was announced by by Putin and all this uh, Donbas and 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 uh, Luka, uh, Donetsk and Lugansk people uh, people republics. You see, that was a, it was it was an excuse why we start the war, but uh, a year uh, later it is just five percent of goal. I actually so want to direct this completely question. Completely change the goal. The goal. The goal uh, concept completely change. I would like to direct this question to Oleg actually because I think that you in your interviews actually you're looking precisely at that. So Yelena, thanks a lot. Uh, um, this is a very um, very extensive answer about how people understand victory, and uh, it's actually very. It, it's quite. Um, I don't even have the English word for that. I would say discombobulating to see how fuzzy this concept is and how many losses are being made uh, at, for 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 what for something people can't even describe. So, Alia, uh, tell us a little bit more about ways people conceptualize victory and purpose of this yeah. war in long uh, longer narratives. Yeah, in the beginning of our discussion, Alec, I, I said that uh, supporting Putin. People uh, say that so uh, we hope that he uh, had some reasons, but like we don't know him, we don't know the, don't know our elite. So people do not understand for what reason the war started. So that is why, of course, they don't have any um, clear image of victory because when you and uh, uh, the elites, so they. Uh, uh, articulate uh, very different goals, like to preserve, uh, to save Donbas people, to defeat N NATO, to 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 de to defend Russia, to so and uh, concerning the, the the concept of victory, you can see how different the elite and and and, and ordinary people, because for Putin, uh, uh, um, with his cult of victory, this war is somehow. Uh, the repetition of uh, uh, Second World, World, World War. So uh, Russia must uh, defeat some, I don't know, enemy. Uh, what ordinary people uh, have is fear of, of, de of defeat. So uh, they uh, don't want like victory in, in a strict, strict, strict sense, but those who uh, proclaim support for the for, for special military operation. They uh, say something like, "Okay, if Russia will be defeated by Ukraine, so we can have like real troubles." And that is why you are asked like how uh, support changed. Uh, people, many people say like, "Okay, in the beginning, like we 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 believe that uh, Putin make a big mistake and even crime." Uh, when he started the, the war. But now, when conflict intensified, we must win. But 
saying we must win, they mean that we cannot be defeated because it is too dangerous for those. So they have very many emotions and the fear of defeat among them is, is important one. So if Putin is obsessed with victory, people are uh, frustrated uh, because they fear that uh, if Russia will be defeated by Ukraine and, uh, and the West, so uh, their lives will become like much worse. And of course, many uh, of people, uh, um, they somehow are sensitive to status uh, Russia has or has to have globally. Uh, and this is not like imperialistic ideology, it's rather like when you go abroad, like and people are friendly or, or not with you. So, and they think, many of, of them think that um, if Russia will lose, it uh, will lost its uh, influence and its respect. So, and they can be treated, can, treated badly by, by, by other people. So, yeah, so I, I think that the defeat, the, the fear of, 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 of loss of defeat is, is what is much more important than desire for victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a very important distinction to make indeed, the fear of defeat and the desire for victory. That's true. Um, we have actually very little time left. Uh, we have to be leaving this space in about three minutes. So I have my last question to you. I'm going to put you in, in an uh, unpleasant place, in an uncomfortable position, both of you. So imagine you are in Moscow taking a Yandex taxi across the city. And throughout the whole 45 minute drive through traffic jams, your driver has been monologizing about the horrible West, which has provoked Russia into this war. And that, of course, he, the driver of this car, actually hates the war and he doesn't wish for women and children to be dying in shellings. But man, they were asking for it. And really, Russia was left with no choice. And whether you want it or not, there is just no other way but to support the special military operation and just to go on until it's until to the bitter end. Now you're almost at your destination. You have 60 seconds left to answer something. What will you say? 60 seconds. Elena. Your sound is off. <laughs> Elena, we can't hear you. <laughs> I, um, I would keep my, my real emotions inside. I would not demonstrate because it does work if you show that, that you are fed up and angry with, with that um, complex. And I would say that, that uh, and you have the only the only way, you, you don't have choice only to go to the war because as long as Putin is in power, you will have the war. You, uh, you have been witnesses in the war in, in Georgia, in, in Syria, in Chechnya, uh, and uh, you just continue. That is the biggest war, and it will be continued. That's the only way. So please accept it as, as your destiny, because you the only uh, you have two choice. You have you have you can you can uh, uh, make um, uh, your wife responsible for getting for getting your compensation while you're at the war. Or you just assign all your uh, property and cars uh, to the relatives and, and run out. You don't have your 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 previous life, uh, which was not happy yet. So uh, the, the Putin killed people outside Russia, inside Russia, and for you the only way now to go to the to, to the war and to be highly uh, uh, potential killed or just run out. No other way. That is, that, is, that is your motherland. Thank you. This must be pretty scary for a taxi driver. Yes, that's what I would try to do, to scare him. Unpleasant news. <laughs> Alek, what will you say? We can't hear you. Turn on your mic, please. I'm sorry. I would focus on, 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 on the situation in Russia. So I would say, uh, I'm patriot of Russia, as you, I believe, but let's see uh, which consequences do we have 
uh, from the war. No perspective for the future. Economic situation is uh, worse and worse. I would touch upon maybe some details of, of his criticism because people, even who support the war, are critical towards some aspects of the war. So I would uh, focus on his own narratives about this. And I would, yeah, say that we can have the war many years. So no hope for peace if we don't change the situation. So just think about, uh, let's think together about that. It, it might be too late in, in, in some day in future. So, so maybe we, we should to, 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 to rethink many things and to, to start doing something. What would you, what would you suggest as to, for thinking as the very first thing? Where should the taxi driver start? Uh, to, to think about consequences that already happened because of the war and that will happen and which, which are not good. So I think for, for Russia, for, for himself, for, for his family, for, for, his, for his country. Pick one consequence. Be precise. One thing. Uh, no future in, in, in general sense. Because infinite war is like, is, 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 a, is a infinite war without clear reasons and, and uh, uh, goals means like uh, living without future. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I think this is a question let, maybe. Let me add, let me add two yeah. words. Uh, with, I would say that with, with your level of loyalty and acceptance of everything from, from the power, from the government, from the, all the upper decisions, you, you will be, for sure, that you will be uh, killing, you will be killed killer. So I, I would, I would, that, that, that is the, the, the worst and most frightened consequences of the war, I, I believe. And it works, the fear works. Yes, the real fear, the, the, the real frightening really works. Thank you, Yelena. I think uh, this might um, appear maybe to some of our audience as a bit of an exaggeration, but uh, I believe that the trajectory that you're drawing in this answer actually is unfortunately the right one, because if we're looking into the future, the prospect that we see this tunnel that you were talking about, this corridor of possibilities is narrowing down and eventually what is left, the two options that you have just named. Thank you very much for everyone who has been with us. Uh, thanks a lot um, to our wonderful participants, uh, Aleg, Yelena, it's been great to have you here. And um, I very much hope we will see you again here um, in the live discussions with Open Democracy or uh, as our authors, our interviewees for um, our web platform. Please follow our newsletter, uh, go visit our website, subscribe to our Telegram channel, and we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. One Thank second. You. Second. Thank you. Uh, I see very many interesting questions. I'm ready to answer every question. If you can technically organize that I will get questions with the contacts, I, 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 can, I, can, I can respond to it, not immediately, but gradually, but not, not that many. I can cover it quite, quite short. Very interesting questions, and we appreciate very much questions. I it think uh, we can ask our uh, technical support. Okay, what I, I'm at your yeah. disposal. Anita, is it possible to save the chat before we leave this room so that maybe we can send uh, the questions that uh, our listeners have uh, posted here um, as a document? No, no problem. Okay. Then, um, Thank you again, Elena. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Um, indeed, we can we can probably produce another series of publications based on all the questions that we have heard today. And I'm very much looking forward to working with you again. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Thank you, Elena. Ciao. Thank you.